And away we go. Third show of the night. It's the bye week. We just crank out content. You want a BCJ podcast with defensive coordinator Tyson Vite? You got that. You want a uh, you want a nightcap with Aaron and I breaking down uh, the reality of a salary cap in college sports? You got that. And if you're looking for your favorite episode of the week, Brendel's Breakdown with Chris Lepore, we got that too. It's brought to you by the Job Center. It's a light industrial staffing agency owned by Kyle Decker and headquartered right here in Cincinnati. Co-host Chris Lepore joined the Job Center team in the summer of 2023 as a national account manager. If you're connected to a company that uses staffing services, reach out to Chris. He will personally follow up about partnering in the mission to change lives. You, you want me to give him your number, Chris, or you want to keep that private? <laughs> hey, if anybody reaches out to you, you can text him your number, but yeah, we're not putting okay. that on YouTube. Oh, we're not putting it on YouTube? Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh, let's get to it. It was uh, it was a bumpy week. They had the loss to West Virginia that, that felt serious uh, because of the next three games and what Cincinnati had coming up on the schedule. Well, they respond. They bounce back. They get a huge win. On the road at Texas Tech, their second Tier 1A uh, road win of the season. And uh, so we we have a lot to get to, Chris, leading up to a look at the Big Bad Cougars. Who, uh, first off, what did you think of Kelvin just storming down the court for a foul? I mean, a terribly missed foul, but uh, <laughs> Kelvin going 90 uh, feet. Uh, to talk to the officials, I think he's won. He's won enough games to uh, to stomp his feet a little bit. He's won enough games to stomp his feet a little bit. You got to earn that. Got to earn that. Yeah, yeah. It was a, it was wild. It was wild to see a coach just come from the other side. Like here he comes. Oh boy, here we go. No, no, that was wild. That was wild. <laughs> Maybe think of the old Mike Davis clip, um, coaching at coaching at Indiana. Did I ever tell you my Mike Davis story? No, but I'm sure we could have a whole podcast sharing Mike Davis stories. So he did. Uh, they they he was at UAB right after he left Indiana, and things weren't going well. Like it was, they were they were not playing well. And they came here, they played Mick, um, and then we did a post game with Mike Davis. And there used to be in the old like interview room, there was a picture, you know, the, the Oscar with the rebound with his legs, yeah, 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 yeah. spread sure. out. Classic. That picture was on the wall. And Mike Davis's press conference ended, and he just sat there for like 20 minutes staring at that picture. He didn't say a word. He didn't really move. He didn't get up. And everybody in the room, like, you know, how the, you know, we're usually joking around, like getting ready to, to either leave or get down and to do the nuts and bolts of the story or whatever. And there right. was Mike Davis just sitting in the room with like tears in his eyes, looking at the Oscar picture. And admiring, it was, admiring Big O. It was very awkward. It's one of the more awkward uh, things I've ever experienced. But, yeah, Mike Davis. Love All right, it. let's get to it. What, what do you let's got? To it. Class yeah, is in session. Bring. There's the bell. Uh, Class is in go. session. Let's do it, man. I think, uh, you know, one of, one of the mantras for uh, West Miller-led teams is when, when, when adversity comes, opportunities right there. That's what you got to see. Backs against the wall to go out there, win a, win a big-time road game. Pretty fun stuff. All right, let's jump in. We're going to do a little CMOS Lacocious late-game offense breakdown to start. Um, before I jump in, you know the clip. Uh, they were doing a little C.J. Frederick feature here. But my guy, Abdul Adu, man, shout-out to Big <laughs> Dooley. Um, Big Duel, I'll say this. When I was in practice uh, the, our first year with, with, with Wes at Cincinnati, um, he's one of the only big guys that I was legitimately scared for my life to use the pad against. Um, I was uh, consulting Bob Mangine quite a few times after trying to do some pad work on Abdul. He's uh, he's now in charge of, of, of the pad work. Uh, and That's Abdul how that was works. a beast. Yeah. Absolute, absolute <laughs> great guy. He'll be finishing up his uh, master's degree in May, wishing him the best, hoping and there's an opportunity for him and, college basketball ranks or in the NBA potentially. So shout out to big Dooley there. All right, let's jump into it. Sideline out of bounds here. 
CMOS is your inbounder. Down one, need a basket. You see they go to this ball screen playing to CMOS's right hand here. Mm -hmm. um, a little false action by Dan Skillings. The handoff into a ball screen can be hard to guard. One, because the defense has to talk about the handoff first. And then right on the back of that, they've got to communicate the ball screen. So you see, you'll see this quite a bit as a pattern in half court offense and in sideline out of bounds situations where you'll see a handoff into a ball screen. It's just a lot for the defense to have to communicate and react to quickly. So get downhill, not great ball screen defense here by Texas Tech. The object is to not let the ball handler get a full, full head of steam. Obviously, we know this is an elite uh, offensive player. Great strategy to try to put him through the ringer on the defensive end as he's got to carry the load on the offensive end. Get downhill. CMOS can obviously score the ball, but he's an underrated ball handler and playmaker. He got to kind of see all of that on display late in this Texas Tech, Texas Tech game. And I'll say this. On a traditional pick and roll, which is basically what you have at this point. Um, the success rate of hitting the roll man is a lot higher if one of these guys lifting on the weak side is an elite three-point shooter. Um, you could see here how Joe Tassant is able to help a lot to the paint and to the ball. If this is an elite three-point shooter, he can't help as much, and maybe we get the lob right now. You'll see them. You'll see Cincinnati looking for that lob a lot out of the ball screen. Um, so the better, more, the more shooting you have lifting out of the corners here on the weak side, the more open this roll man is going to be. Um, obviously, Dan and John have different strengths on offense, uh, but CMOS is still able to get downhill and make a great play. Four minutes left in the game at that point. All right, three and a half here. We're up one. CMOS is your ball handler on this possession. We're in a set play situation here, kind of walking the ball up the court, calling a play. In this case, it's going to be a high ball screen play with him and Aziz. That just worked. Why not try it again? So we're going high middle third ball screen here. In ball screen action, a lot of times coaches will break it down in thirds of the court. So you've got the middle third, which is essentially playing through the elbows. Anything in the middle third, be right up here at the top of the key. Then you got your side and wing ball screens on either side. So when you hear that terminology, middle third, we're talking about inside the elbows right up there at the top of the key. So we got the middle third ball screen. This time playing to CMOS's left hand. Maybe not by choice, but the defense does a nice job cutting him off going right. Takes it back to the left hand really you can see the design of the play here as a uh, look at day day, day. day. Look at day yeah. day. Look at day day on the execution here. This is how you sprint to screen. That's exactly how you teach it in five on O. Um, somewhat of a, a Spain action, but it's definitely misdirection because they're starting him in the corner instead of right here. So he's going to go back screen Aziz's man, hoping we can maybe get something for Aziz going to the basket. Um, so you'll see Day Day set the screen here. Aziz, good heads up play, realizes that CMOS has a head of steam going downhill. Great screen by Day Day to take the shot blocker out of the play. And we get a nice layup. Great execution out of the under four media timeout to get an easy basket. All right. Up that's one, again. one of those things that nobody probably saw. Right. But that play from Day Day is elite. No question. Wipe out a, a, a shot blocker, a rim runner, a guy that's that's probably going to give CMOS trouble if he actually is able to move with him to the rim. And Day Day wipes him out. Easy layup. Like great execution. That would be something that they'll show in film and talk about doing your job. You're not gonna get anything in the box score, no assist, no points for that. Um but it'll be something that the, the coaching staff is charting as they go back to watch the film to give Day Day credit for that possession creating offense, um, something that they chart religiously in their film sessions as a staff 
spent many hours in a film room charting that charting those details uh, and uh, and you know it cre- it creates buy in you know you want to rack up those those uh those points as a player um all right CMOS in a ball screen has looked good so we're under 3 need a basket up one let's go right back to it again you'll see this kind of handoff to a ball screen obviously faking the handoff here um into that middle third area ball screen with the Z's. And you can see the confusion, right? That handoff to ball screen. These two are trying to figure out what to do on this handoff. And then there's a ball screen right behind it. Well, Joe Tassant thinks he's staying with the ball. He's calling a switch. So we've already got an advantage here in this ball screen. Aziz really doesn't even have anybody to screen. So he just start <laughs> he just starts rolling to the rim. So in an emergency here, they switched it. Okay, so you've got the big man on CMOS and Joe Tassant on Aziz. So the emergency switched switched it. All right, what you're going to see next is what the NBA calls a boomerang action, where you, you see you have a mismatch, you've used your dribble, so you get off of it or move it, and you get it right back. Call that a boomerang. Get rid of it, get it right back. Now you're essentially playing one-on-one with this mismatch here and you just, you like your chances, like your chances a lot. All right. Uh, So that's the boomerang action. Now it's time to just play some one-on-one in the backyard, me versus you. That's a tough shot. Great execution. Great execution on the boomerang. All right, let's get right back to it. Let's run that same action. All right. You see, uh, we're getting CMOS open with Aziz just kind of standing here. Um, not really head hunting, trying to make contact on the screen, just there to get CMOS open. And then we're going to get to that fake handoff ball screen again. 30 seconds to go. Obviously, this is the play that everybody saw on ESPN. That would end up winning the game. But again, same idea. All right. CMOS in a ball screen has, has been working since the under five minute mark. Let's stick with it. Let's run the same exact play, see if we can create some confusion. They've obviously struggled with it. And you can see, again, this time they're re- they're really ready to switch it, this handoff situation. Um, so even though the ball doesn't change hands, CMOS keeps it. They switch it right away. Now they got to guard this ball screen. And it's really hard to be moving this way full speed, get hit by a screen, and keep your man in front going to the right. So good strategy here. Get the ball downhill, and that's that's a tough shot. Knock it down for the game. And uh, there was obviously that's- some uh, questionable end of game, you know, point calculation, but we won't go there. Uh, you had I, something there? I, I was just going to say that's as a coach, the way CMOS stopped on a dime, gathered, and took a calm – not a rush. He, he could have easily, like, if you play it forward, he could have easily carried himself down towards the baseline no into question. a shot blocker, into a help defender that's right there. But that hard stop, as everybody else continued this way, and that calm, like, easy 12-footer is, you know, it, it's what makes coaches uh, very happy in those 2 a.m. film breakdowns. No doubt. No doubt. And again, in this uh, in this ball screen scenario, you know, when you've got threats um, to shoot the ball, this roll, this roll guy tends to be more open. In this case, the roll's not there. But look at the trouble if he goes to the rim. Oh, no doubt. He's got four guys ready down there. So nice stop. stop Really impressive. Yep. And I think Dan Skillings was ready to rebound that thing if we missed. He absolutely uh, was. A, got a great knack for timing on cuts, crashing the boards, does a lot of the little things on offense behind the defense. I got a nickname for him. I don't think he would like. For skills? What do you got? Yeah. Gumby, damn it. <laughs> I like it. He the does move he a little bit. Like, yeah. Bends and like, it just, yeah. it's so unnatural looking. Like, he's got some Gumby to him. He does have a way of appearing like there's no bones in his body sometimes. (laughs) Um, He fell once in that Texas Tech game. It was like, did he break? 
And then he just popped back up. You're like, oh, yeah, he doesn't have back up. He doesn't yep. have bones. Just, That's right. No I remember bones. now. I love it. Uh, all right. I know we've been talking a lot about ball screen D. A couple possessions down the stretch where we actually got stops. But the ball screen D, uh, I'm sure, came up in the film with the team um, as things that they need to address and get right. Um, nice action here um, at the under four for Texas Tech. Again, anytime you can have some off ball screening into a ball screen, it delays the defense's ability to react to it. So they set this back screen here, looking to maybe get a cheap lob. If it's not there, then you've got a guard to guard ball screen in the middle third. So they set the back screen, lob's not there. Guard to guard ball screen. Anytime a big is setting a ball screen for a big or a guard is setting a ball screen for a guard should be an automatic switch situation. So right about now, Day Day should know that this is going to be a guard to guard ball screen. He should be telling John Newman, switch, switch, guard to guard, switch. Um, that communication either doesn't happen or it happens after the screen has occurred. So Day Day right now looks like he's staying with his man. So John Newman's like, oh, shoot, I better get through back to mine. Day Day recognizes it. Oh, shoot, that was a switch situation. John then tries to get back to his, and we left the best shooter of the gym wide open at the top of the key. Got away with it here, but that's something we got to tighten up in a late-game situation defensively. Almost let one get away there that would have really hurt. All right, and again, I know we covered it a couple weeks ago. This is just a popular set in college basketball right now. You're going to see it almost every game if you turn on the NBA, turn on college basketball. Spain, España, whatever you want to call it. Spain action. It's a hard action to guard. That's why it's so common, so popular. Um, you'll see here Joe Toussaint, who's in the action, uses some misdirection. Obviously, we're prepared to guard the ball screen this way. You see how far Aziz has jumped out. So John really wants to send it this way. Unfortunately, he gets back to the right where we don't have anybody. Day Day does a good job recognizing he jumps up to switch. You can see him calling the switch, right? He's pointing it out. He's calling it out. Get back to mine. I was guarding a really good shooter. We got to get there. But in Spain action, there's more to it than just a ball screen. 22 is going to bury John Newman right now with the screen. And again, that's a clean look for a guy that can make 10 threes in a game. Got away with one here. Didn't actually secure the rebound, which was a little scary as well. Um, but just a couple of things we got to tighten up in ball screen defense, just recognizing, uh, you know, switch situations a little earlier. And then two, when we have ball screen coverage designed to set to stop a certain play, we got to send it that way. Can't let them get back downhill the other way. Yep. So ball screen D. All right. Well, wow. and. A perfect segue into maybe the best ball screen defense team in the country. Let's let, take a let look. Me, let me, let me take it a little part. Maybe the best ball screen program there is. Like what they do to blow this up. I love, as we've talked about, what Day Day and what John have been able to do in terms of getting over the top and icing oh, man. and yeah. avoiding ball screens. Houston says, bring us your ball screen. We are going to devour you alive. Yes. They don't hide yes, from they it. Do. They're like, come get some. No question. And, you know, we're going to jump into it, uh, take a look at a couple clips where they're in their traditional ball screen coverage, and then maybe uh, take a look at what Kansas did against them um, as a possible game plan on how to attack it. But I'll say this, trying, you know, I went, I went and looked and, and studied their ball screen defense this year. One, they're switching a lot more than they ever have. Um, they are still playing some hard coverage, which we'll see, uh, especially I think when they see smaller guards, they, they think get aggressive. Um, so we'll see some of that, but it was really hard to find a clip of somebody creating advantages in their ball screen defense. I mean, I was going back they to non-conference. It is tough, man. I mean, there's a reason why they're number one defensively in almost every category. Um, you know, just play the system I, I look at for data. 
I was looking at their ball screen defense in every category. It's like 99 percent top. Elite, 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 yep, elite, elite across the board. <laughs> across the board. So let's take a look here. Um, obviously, Oklahoma State, they gave it to them. Um, Oklahoma State here in gray, Houston in white. These next couple clips will just give you an idea of how hard it's going to be to get a clean look in this game. They just play so hard on defense. And you'll see here, again, this is a great strategy against teams that hard hedge. We've talked about this um, this set in particular, a hook screen, set a ball, set a down screen into a ball screen, try to create an advantage just to make the defense get there a little later so they can't get high aggressive. Um, so good strategy here by Oklahoma State. But again, they're switching a lot more. So you'll see the switch happen, and they're really good at it. And again, what's amazing to me is that on these drives, when Oklahoma State tries to go one-on-one, -on -one, you think about Houston and you think about them having like a smothering defense. Like there's not a lot of help given on right. this drive. They're just really good at guarding the ball one-on-one. -on -one. There's not a lot of support. They get a little bit of support here, but not a ton. And uh, And when you're dead – so the dead call, this will be something good for uh, while class is in session. When a ball handler picks up the ball in a situation like this, a live possession, ball handler picks it up, That the term to use is dead. Okay, their dribble is dead. Uh, somebody, whoever's guarding the ball, whoever sees it far, first, just starts yelling, dead, dead, dead. And that kind of amplifies uh, how aggressive you can get off the ball. And so this is one of those dead, dead, dead situations and they're like a, a shark that tastes blood here, and they're going to get that thing. And Jamal Shedd is right now arguably the player of the year in the league, um, obviously in all the advanced metrics, ranked really high defensively, but has also had a good year on offense too, averaging almost six assists a game on uh, 12 points. Yeah. All right, so again, you see this uh, this strategy of let's screen into a ball screen, so maybe they're a little later in their hedge. Um, you could definitely see Cincinnati do some of this uh, in the game on Saturday. I do have uh, a quick question. Yeah, sure. Are they not blitzing as much? Or are they more hard hedging this year than, and in the past, right, they have blitzed the yeah. ball handler at times and pushed that ball handler all the way out. Oh yeah. You know, past you'll, see, the... you'll see that. You'll see that here. It's okay. about, it's about 50 50 in terms of blitz or hard hedge and then switch. Um, yeah. It seems to be pretty personnel based um, who, who on offense is going to be in that ball screen action and uh, where the screen is happening on the floor. So they've, they've definitely evolved. They have some lineups, I think where they prefer to switch from my study and uh but you'll you'll see here the the blitz or or you know hard hedge that we're talking about. Similar things, not exactly the same thing. Right. So this would be this would this would fall into your blitz category. Um, the guy guarding the ball, the screener, is going to come up and try to meet the ball, and like Chad said make them retreat dribble or dribble backwards towards half court. The idea is that he can't turn the corner. He's going this way. We're big. We have the advantage. Even though the roll man is going to look open for a while, the odds are it's a tough pass to make. So you'll see that's exactly what happens here. They get really aggressive in this ball screen. Smaller ball handler here. Um, and you can see the roll man, the roll man being the screener, the guy who set the screen. He looks really open right now. I mean, if there was a way to telepathically get the ball from here to there, it's a dunk. But <laughs> against this athleticism, this length on the floor, and their instincts, they're going to see that and try to throw it there. But unless you throw it on an absolute rope or laser, it's it's going to get picked off, which is exactly what you see there. Um, and Chris, the thing in that, that, that people are going to be looking for, like how you will know if it's working for Houston is when he sets the ball screen to where he ends up, look how it's what eight steps backwards. He takes yeah. four or five dribbles backwards 
when you're coming off a ball screen, you want to play downhill. Yep. You don't want to be throwing a pass to the rim from half court. <laughs> um, now, some strategies on this against the hard hedge, some teams, as soon as you see hard hedge, you would just move it right here. And hopefully this guy's a little higher on the floor so that it's an easier pass. As soon as you see hard hedge, move it, and maybe you can attack downhill. We've employed that strategy before. Some teams will tell this roll guy to stop right in here and hit him right now if you can. Um, and so there's there's a handful of different strategies. Some teams will just get it out of the ball handler's hand, kind of boomerang it right back to them and try to set another screen, see if they can hard hedge twice in one possession, which is difficult to do. Uh, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what what Cincinnati tries to do on Saturday. But just an example here. My man looks open, but he's not open. Not uh, even let's close take, to open. No, not, not even, even close. close to open. No. Um, all right. Let's take a look at Kansas, what they tried against it. Their plan was as soon as they saw the hard hedge was to get rid of it. Kind of a, this is what we would kind of call a baby slip. Um, ball screen. As soon as you see this guy get aggressive, big man's going to take a step or two this way. And we're just going to either get in the air and throw it to him or throw a quick bounce pass to him one way or another. This is two on one right here. Let's get it out and play four on three elsewhere on the court. Um, now the, who is, who is Hunter Dickinson for us? Most likely you probably want Victor catching this pass. Um, you know, don't know if you feel as good about it with Aziz, maybe Jamil in this situation. But Victor's probably your guy because he can catch it here and either move it or, you know, play big to big with the other guy on the baseline. You know, maybe shoot it if he's open. Uh, but you got to have a good decision maker here. Obviously, Hunter Dickinson's got a great little 10 foot floater. Uh, so it, it worked there. But you can see in this next clip, you know, this is this is a set play here. But same concept. They get to the ball screen they see the aggressive coverage and they just get rid of it right away uh, to the big who set the screen. This time Houston's a lot more ready for it. Obviously uh, they just got beat on it a few minutes before this. So the help defense is a lot more prepared for this pass. They know what the strategy is now and they're all over it, man. I mean, whatever your strategy is, you might get them once, but it's going to be hard to get them twice. Right. So and I Houston think shot I, seven, or Kansas shot 70% and it still wasn't easy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There's only a couple of clips where they created an advantage in the ball screen. Um, there have been some teams that have basically abandoned their ball screen sets against them. <laughs> we're not running. And, uh, yeah, and we're, they we're, we're, off the ball and baseline runner yeah. runner and yep. 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 No doubt. Forget no putting doubt, anybody so. up in the, in the middle third and trying to even set a ball screen because you're going to get devoured. Yeah. So it, it, it'll be interesting. Um, I imagine it's going to be a fun environment in fifth third as it usually is when they come to town yeah. and uh, big 12 play, up? baby, big 12. You coming up? Uh, I will not be there Saturday. Will not be there Saturday. Tuesday. Well, Iowa state, Iowa state. It's a shame. We're not going to have one of these before Iowa state. Iowa State's fascinating to me because I don't think anybody knows anything about them. Right. And then you look at the box scores every night and they're beating people. Yeah. It's it's incredible. It's incredible. So we'll talk next, about it. Now. Next one I'm going to catch is going to be at TCU, actually. Ooh, um, making the trip to Fort action. Worth on business. We're going to have a little event at that game. So that'll be a fun one. But one go, at a time, baby. Houston on Saturday. Go to Waxahachie. And check out the uh, Meat Church uh, uh, store. I'll write it down. All right. All right. That's going to wrap right. it up. Thanks to Chris, as always. Brought to you by the Job Center. This is Brendel's Breakdown featuring Chris Lepore right here on BearcatJournal.com. Class is out. <laughs>